I've looked at the best of Star Trek, so let's delve deeper into Babylon 5. In no particular order, these are the 10 best episodes of Babylon 5. <laughs> However, I will start by saying that I've cheated quite a lot by giving spots to multiple episodes. Babylon 5 is known for having large overarching stories and oftentimes the best episodes are either continuations or conclusions of long running arcs. So I guess a better title for the video should be the 10 best Babylon 5 stories. Ish. Number 1. Mind War. The first season of Babylon 5 is pretty shaky like most sci-fi shows. It took a while for the show to find its footing and for audiences to fully get on board with what it's going for. However, an early gem is Mind War. A powerful rogue telepath has fled to Babylon 5 and two Psycops arrive in close pursuit. This is a great episode for its introduction of a lot of cool things in the show. The backstory of a telepath's place in society offers a plethora of fascinating themes and ideas. But the best thing introduced here is fan favourite Psycop Alfred Bester, played by Star Trek's own Walter Koenig. Koenig had a career slump after Star Trek and it's great that he was able to find this awesome recurring character in another sci-fi franchise. Effortlessly swapping out a comedic Russian for a cold, calculating but also highly charismatic spook. He's a character you want to hate, but Koenig's performance is so strong that you actually can't help but like him. His clashes with Garibaldi are hinted at here, but it would go on to be one of the best pairings of the show. A great first appearance here and many more great follow-ups afterwards. But on top of great introductions for concepts and characters, the story explored in this episode is also completely compelling by itself. The concept surrounding telepathy and telekinesis centred on a tragic relationship gives the viewer plenty of brain fuel while also tugging on the heartstrings. Although Koenig's performance is what steals the show, William Allen Young and Andrea Thompson are really fantastic here. The first season may not be great, but it hits some highs now and again. Number 2, A Voice in the Wilderness Parts 1 and 2. Another one from the first season here because someone's gotta give it some love. The first two part of the show gives us many elements which would become staples of the show. The Babylon 5 crew discover that the planet they orbit, Epsilon 3, isn't as deserted as it first appeared. It's soon revealed that the planet is home to advanced alien technology, and various factions want control of it. This is a great JMS tool of establishing a status quo and then breaking it. Finding out that the system these stories have been taking place in all along is actually the origin of powerfully dangerous alien technology is a real surprise. Unraveling the mystery beneath the surface is a compelling watch. The clashes between Sinclair and the cruiser captain Pierce as well as another alien race come to lay claim conjures really intense drama. Cap it all off with the backdrop of the Martian revolution springing up and we have even more great character development for supporting players. Londo's it can't be that bad speech to Garibaldi is one of my favourite moments of the show, concluding in a nice space battle and a bittersweet turn of events for Delenn, and I'd stand by this two-parter as being pretty underrated, not to mention the unexpected repercussions this story has with the larger arc. If you haven't watched season 1 in a while, revisit this one because it's better than you remember. Number 3, Babylon Squared, War Without End. Yeah, this is me starting to cheat now, but these two episodes are viewed best as a pair. Babylon Squared is an early episode in Season 1. The mysterious reappearance of the Babylon 4 station draws out Sinclair and Garibaldi to investigate. Upon arrival, they discover all kinds of strange temporal and spatial anomalies, a weird alien speaking encrypted sentences, and a figure in a spacesuit doing the rounds as well. This episode ends with the station vanishing for good and the characters, along with the viewer, being left with a lot of questions. Jump to season 3 and we discover that all this was a massive time travel mission to take Babylon 4 back in time to the first shadow war orchestrated in part by Sinclair's own future self and Sinclair is revealed to have been veiling all this time, concluding a story arc that spanned the entire show as well as a prequel movie and oh you are just showing off now. These two episodes are basically a giant puzzle. A two part story which raises a long list of questions and then gracefully answers them with some of the most mind blowing reveals ever witnessed. All the great performances and character interactions, of which there are many, are almost forgotten at the sheer impressiveness of Straczynski's grand plan plotting. Seeing all these dangling threads so neatly tied up is one of the most strangely satisfying things you will ever experience, and it's quintessential Babylon 5. Number 4. The Long Twilight Struggle It's tough to choose between all the great foreshadowing episodes, pun intended, throughout season 2. However, none are more devastating than The Long Twilight Struggle. The Narn Centauri War is reaching breaking point. In a last ditch effort to stave off defeat, the Narn forces plan an attack against a key Centauri outpost, unknowingly entering a trap where they are confronted by the shadows. The ending of this episode is simply jaw dropping. All we want is for the Narns to have a win. 
Not only do they not have a win, but they suffer the most excruciating massacre seen in the show thus far. Nothing can quite compare to the utter terror that is seeing the sheer destructive power of a shadow ship. Intercutting with Jakar's desperate prayers and Christopher Frankie's outstanding score add another layer of shock. And just when you think it can get worse, the completely heartbreaking spectacle of the Narn homeworld being laid to waste, watched over by a character who used to be likeable and uplifting, now corrupted in an unimaginably tragic character arc. It feels like an epic season finale, but we're just getting started. Number 5. The Fall of Night As if seeing Narn's obliteration was bad enough, how about the unequivocal failure of Babylon 5's entire mission? The season 2 finale sees the last Narn heavy cruiser seeking refuge at Babylon 5. Sheridan secretly agrees to this, but this secret is soon betrayed to other authorities. With Earth Gov and the Centauri breathing down everyone's necks, the crew's moral integrity is tested as the situation spirals out of control, finally showing that Babylon 5's mission to maintain peace has failed. While others are covering their asses back home, Sheridan and his crew strain under pressure as they choose to take a more compassionate stance rather than a political one. Much like the conclusion to Season 1, by the end of the episode, nothing is quite the same. Number 6. Severed Dreams Many would call this the best episode of the entire show, and for damn good reason. Since the death of President Santiago in Season 1, President Clark has been slowly building up a tyrannical regime in Earth territory. Things come to a head when Clark declares martial law, brutally oppressing all opposition, driving the crew of the Babylon 5 to declare its independence. This is massive. The ultimate status quo shift in the show, bringing the audience and characters into truly alien territory. With the threat from the shadows growing, having our main cast lose support from their own homeworld is shocking and unnerving. The episode is a slow build of terror. The brilliant writing, direction and editing create a sense of the station slowly being surrounded until it all comes to a head in one of the most dramatic scenes in the series. The final space battle is astoundingly well paced and crafted. Rather than offering cheap thrills, this is a tragedy on display. None of the Babylon 5 crew want to do this. This is neighbor against neighbor rather than good versus evil. This is ordinary people being forced into desperate, impossible situations by corrupt leaders and a betrayal of freedoms. Every death is felt in this battle. Every ship lost is a disaster. Finally concluding in a crowd-pleasing triumph, setting the high standard for the future of Babylon 5 as a show. This episode was a Hugo win for the show, and it absolutely deserves it. Number 7. Into the Fire Honestly, the entire lead-up to this episode is worth noting, but I'm already cheating enough with this top 10. The task of concluding such a story as the Shadow War is monumental, and Straczynski shows us how it's done. With an epic that's so epic that the word epic doesn't even seem to cover the scale of this utter monstrosity. From minute one you are on the edge of your seat. Once again JMS plays with the status quo to give us oh shit moments one after another. The absolute power of Vorlons and Shadows is rarely glimpsed and once both sides bring all their guns to bear, the result is breathtaking. Not to mention the massively satisfying confrontation between Londo and Mr. Morden. Although the Vision Quest style resolution may disappoint some, it feels more appropriate than just lots of explosions, of which we've had plenty. These are wide sweeping statements about the nature of sentient life itself, and yet it never feels divorced from the central character dynamics and conflicts which anchor the show. Sheridan's words, now get the hell out of our galaxy, perfectly concludes the vast sweeping story that was promised from the first season, and it does not disappoint. You wouldn't think it could get more intense than this, and then the rest of season 4 happens. Number 8. Between Darkness and Light, Endgame it's difficult to top the end of the Shadow War. The fate of the entire galaxy was at stake, planets were being swatted from the sky, and yet bringing the conclusion of the season back to Earth makes it hit home even harder. Into the Fire was a finale of epic musings on the philosophy of life. Endgame is the accumulation of a much more personal conflict. Despite its smaller scale, the conclusion to President Clark's arc feels more emotional and impactful because of its proximity to home. The final battle is dramatic and well, Babylon 5 can do awesome space action in its sleep by this point. As satisfying as it is to finally see President Clark ousted, a villain who somehow managed to be ever present and threatening despite never actually regularly appearing in any episode, the sting of the story arc's finale is the gut punch of Marcus Cole sacrificing himself to save Ivanova, reminding us of the true human cost to this conflict, something expertly done in Severed Dreams and brought full circle in these two masterpieces. Number 9. Sleeping in Light I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. Everyone's internal monologue when watching these episodes. It was pretty clear that Babylon 5 lost a lot of steam by Season 5. There were some good stories here and there, but nothing which quite captured the heights of what came before. That being said, you have to be made of stone not to feel something in these episodes. Rather than an epic final battle, the end of Babylon 5 shows our favourite characters going their separate ways, the death of Captain Sheridan, 
and ultimately the demolition of the Babylon 5 station itself. While the finales of other shows promise more adventures to come, this is a definitive end to this period of history. There will be no more Babylon 5. There will be no more Babylon stations. We've been through war and love and loss. We've laughed, we've cried, and now it's over. Number 10. The Deconstruction of Falling Stars while the previous episodes mentioned give us the conclusion to our favourite characters, Deconstruction of Falling Stars gives us a conclusion to the entire human race. J. Michael Straczynski's plan was to show viewers a five-year glimpse of a universe which had a long history before and will continue to have a long history afterwards. We are taken hundreds, thousands, and finally over a million years into the future, witnessing the lead-up to and aftermath of more wars and the ultimate evolutionary pinnacle of the human race. At the dawn of a new age, just as it was, in the beginning. There are many more great episodes of this show I simply didn't have time to go into. If you have ones you want to mention and discuss, I'll be happy to do so in the comments. Until next time, the year is 2017. Have a good one. See ya.